Hi everybody, how are you doing? Johan and Charleston back with you with the second show, Better With Age. Today we're very, very proud to have Nate Hiltz, the lead singer from the Dead South with us. Nate, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you guys doing? It's a little dark. I'm doing pretty good, man. Can you guys see me okay? Do I blend in? <laughs> I feel like I look like them. <laughs> Every show, it's a different background with Charles and Nate, so you got to just kind of roll with the punches here. So, <laughs> Nate, I got to, before we get started, I got to tell you one thing. Uh, one thing about Charleston, he, he's, he's, he puts his mind to everything he puts 110 percent. so when i told him that we were going to be um having you on the show for for the first show um uh we we're doing some background we we're like okay what are we going to do about for nick lewis um charleston you know he's he's relentless he's aggressive you know just like the way he is on the football field uh he went and he he's like a pi uh in his spare time so what he did is that he went and he found online Nick Lewis's like grade nine pictures. He found his grade 10, you know, basketball pictures, everything like that. So when I told him that we're going to have a chance to talk with Nate, he goes, oh, yeah, okay, no problem. Two days ago, I said, okay, we're, we're good to go with Nate. He goes, okay, I've been digging. I've been, I've been talking to some guys that went to Leboldis. I'm going to find out, see what I can. So any, any other pictures that come up? Uh, of you later on, you know who to blame in regards to that. <laughs> <laughs> how you been? How's uh, how you been of late? I know this is kind of a, a different time. That's not a usual thing where we can say, "Hey, how's COVID been treating you? How are you doing?" Uh, things like that. I know you guys had a lot of big things on the go previous to uh, everything happened. How's life for you now? Well, life has definitely changed. Uh, I don't think I've sat down for this long before. It's <laughs> been pretty crazy. Um, <clears throat> it's it's been really nice in terms of trying to get stuff done around the house, or like you know, actually getting a lot more personal time with the family, even if it's over Zoom and phone calls. Just having more headspace for that. Um, our touring world has changed completely. We've missed two tours now. We're supposed to be in Europe right now. We were supposed to be in Europe a month ago as well, and we're just kind of taking the blows as they come and as they keep canceling stuff we have to try and reschedule them for next year hoping that that some stuff will start yeah and I'm, yeah. I'm yeah i'm sure it's the same way with charleston he's got no clue about what's going on football wise <laughs> and then, uh, yeah man it's i mean it's hard times right now especially for a lot of people for athletes just for you common day, everyday worker i mean nine to five worker man it's hard for everybody right now because a lot of people are out of jobs musicians like yourself getting shows canceled left and right you were supposed to perform at juno's this year right so yeah i had tickets to go to that show i bought three <laughs> tickets and don't know who i was going with but i know i was just gonna go so <laughs> that was, I was looking yeah that was, was the that was the first time that charleston was gonna hear you live and i was telling him okay man you gotta go hear me you gotta go hear me you're gonna do this you gotta say hi to nate you gotta go and <laughs> do that and he was, I was trying i was trying to see what everybody going stir crazy about <laughs> i started hearing all this bluegrass music and i even asked johan can you please define to me i need you to do this for me nate what exactly is bluegrass music oh well, bluegrass music is um music that was started in north carolina by uh, earl scruggs and uh lesser flack and and um Oh man, I'm just blanking right now on the most important. It'll come to me as I'm going. But the <laughs> style of music that uh, these these guys came up with, and they just started, I don't know, play. It was like a faster version of what was out there. And people, it was, I don't know, it just spoke to the people around there. What we do is a little different than bluegrass, but we definitely take from it and inspire from it too. It's like the punk of the old days, you know. There you oh, go. So would you consider would you consider yourselves to be in a category of your own? Like who is your competition? Ah, that's a I, I would say we're definitely in a category of our own. Not saying that we're the best out there, but no one really knows where to put us. We just kind of you know, we can be at a metal festival, a punk festival, a country festival, a bluegrass festival. It just kind of works. So keeping the door keeping the door open. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. 
Nate, tell us a little bit about uh, Local Boy. You know, it kind of, when I asked you to be um, on the show here, when we asked you to be on the show, we wanted to be able to tie in Regina. All right, Charleston's here in Regina now. I moved to Regina 18 years ago from Saskatoon. Nobody does that, right? Saskatoon versus Regina. That's... <laughs> That's competition right there. So, uh, so you guys uh, are local boys, right? Local, uh, all, all four members of the band grew up here in Regina and went to La Boldis, or where'd you guys go? Uh, three of us did. Um, Colton, our band plays actually from Prince Albert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so how has it like been growing up in Saskatchewan and now you guys are touring around Europe, Canada, U.S., all over? Yeah, it's uh, quite a bit different. <laughs> you know yeah yeah i mean you know you get used to being up around here and all the way to saskatchewan and um actually one thing i did love about this band is even in saskatchewan we got to discover a lot of places i've never heard of or been to as well yeah just kind of getting invited to play these places and uh it's pretty interesting it, it's awesome the, the way it's expanded our minds and let us just see the world is incredible I bet, I bet. That's one of the things I know Charleston as an athlete's going on, been all over too. Yeah, I've been to Atuna, Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> he was in, Charleston was recently playing hockey over the, uh, over the off season in Imperial, Saskatchewan, and that was okay. the event to be able to go and do that there. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that uh, I grew up in Saskatoon and when I was going to university, I got to play, uh, or I got to, to work at a place called Louis pub, right? The U of S campus. And when I worked there for four years, um, it was known as kind of the, the venue for bands. It was fantastic. This is in the 96 to 2000. We got to see some of the bands like Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. We got to see, Bands play there like uh, 50 for 40, The Watchmen. Uh, I mean, there's just hundreds of bands that were just fantastic. Um, for you, what's it been like to, to be able to grow up here and then you're starting to play at places like the Conexus uh, Center of the Arts? Um, you know, that was the last show I, I watched you guys there. Uh, I, my wife and I went there, fantastic. We were just, our mind was blown after that with then Dino Sons and you guys and just everything. How's it been like? Oh, it's been incredible. I mean, our our goal was kind of to play at O'Hanlon's here in Regina. We had seen a lot of bands <laughs> play there, and we're like, oh, one day we'll play O'Han. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to go from wanting to play at O'Han to being able to fill the Quebec Arts Center is uh, pretty incredible. I find that I find that kind of big, especially because there's not a real humongous music scene here in Regina. Like there's not a place like you can go besides, um, I think Capitol, where they have live music every once in a while at, at Capitol, but there's not a big scene for like live music like that here. Um, so every time something does come around, you know, a lot of people around the area do support it. Yeah, it's good. I, I noticed that Regina definitely goes in ebbs and flows. Sometimes there's music all over the place. I mean, the exchange is, is really good to have the music as well. Where I met you guys. Um, Fat Badger has uh, the Alley Dogs playing there every Tuesday night kind of thing, which is great. But we've been losing a lot of venues over the years. Um, there used to be quite a few more, and, and now it's just kind of getting slim pickings. And, yeah, the remember, music scene, it, like, yeah, it grows and shrinks all the time. Yeah, I remember the state, you know, I remember – Places like the state would always play live kind of a harder rock music. Then there would always be, you know, McNally's would be doing some cover bands always. And then, uh, you know, Old Hands was always good for that and picking that up. But I mean, just like in Saskatoon, the one thing that's scary now is that I was just talking with a bar owner yesterday and, and um, you know, they said they're not going to reopen after COVID. It's, it's a scary time to be able to think about, you know, how many places now we're going to see if we didn't have a lot before what are we going to do now after and be able to do that? So what's the, what's the future like for you guys? I know that you guys, is it just the same thing as Charleston? Wait and see, wait and see. You guys, I know you got some tour dates. You guys released uh, uh, your latest album a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of touring, we're not really too sure. Like I said before, we're kind of booking a year away as they get canceled kind of thing. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, luckily there is, other options in the meantime, uh, like recording music, trying to work on some video projects and stuff like that, just kind of keep uh, 
everything moving and uh, yeah. Yeah, going from there. What about, um, uh, do you think that you guys are going to be doing a lot more uh, local shows or, or Canadian shows now that, I mean, with the way that travel's going too, they're saying that travel could be up to four times more expensive, just the way that, you know, we just probably won't be able to get across the border for a while or it might be different. I know Charleston hasn't been back to the States since when, Charleston? It's the last time you were oh, there. Oh, it's been a while. I don't even know what the States smell like anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you think could you foresee you guys looking at maybe doing more local shows or you guys looked at to do anything uh uh I know that bands like the drop uh, dropkick murphys they're doing shows now on uh, live shows i think um uh they're doing live shows on air in, in front of empty stadiums you know on may twenty ninth things like that which you'd never hear about before now you know has anything like that been discussed or or anything in regards to that? Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion on what to do to just continue playing, how to go about it in a different way than other people have done it. Um, the, the tough thing about doing, you know, playing to empty stadiums is you're not getting that live feedback from the people mm. to really create that show experience, which would make it a, a little more difficult. But yeah, uh, it's, it's a very interesting time to see where this goes. It's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be very, very tricky. Yeah, we're, but you but you have been locked up in the lab, so you have to be <laughs> writing. You have to be writing right now. Oh yeah, there's been some stuff in the works in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Charleston about same thing about for him. I said, how odd would it feel coming out of the stadium to bring it out, and nobody's out there, and you're going like, okay, well, yeah, I'm coming out to, you know, to you're used to thirty three thousand rabid rider fans. And now you're going to come out and no one's going to be there. It's got to be different mentally. It's going to be different, you know, for you guys to be able to, to, I'm sure that when you guys came out in Conexus there and you had everybody standing cheering, that vibe must have been just fantastic to be performing on there. But now, you know, you're going to be doing no one there. It's a different mental game maybe for you guys to be able to, to do that or how to be able to feel it. I think so. I mean, even when you're doing a live album, like you try and capture all these feelings and sounds but it's just it's different than when you play live because live you get that you know you get that energy where you want to you know you want to hit someone a little harder you know you want to run a little faster you want to sing a little harder all of that stuff you yeah. can feel it from the people <laughs> so, but i guess yeah good question like charleston how do you feel about that like going to play football with, without anyone watching you I mean, you just got to work together at that point. You've got to find a way to, to thrive off your teammates now. To, you got to celebrate with your teammates more. You got to really, really find a way to take advantage. There's always something that you can get an upper hand on the situation. So if there's no crowd, there's no crowd in the stands. There's no screaming out there. Now I can hear the quarterback's cadence. Now I can, <laughs> now I, now I can hear the play calls in the huddle. So, <laughs> so you got to just take advantage of the situation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or maybe what we're, what we're looking at here is that we, you guys can do more of the same thing that Michael Jordan did is a more of a backstage documentary and then seeing how you guys prepare, but uh, it'd be different uh, without those crowds. We're trying to see if Charles can go get a mic on the whole year now and be able to do that. But that's uh <laughs> that'd be that'd be an interesting long 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 show so <laughs> yeah i got i do got a question for you so how many how many different hats do you have <laughs> like like the wide the wide brim hat it's only one that's my one well on stage yeah that's my one yeah okay where, <laughs> where do i find one <laughs> i got that one custom made in uh by a, a fellow in sisters oregon named gene baldwin so I can in oregon it. in oregon yeah Oh my goodness! I gotta go all the way to Oregon to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Good news is he can mail you stuff. So, right, yeah. oh man, yeah, that's maybe, nice. Whole maybe. head you know, you gotta like measure the shape of your head and then the size of it too, so that he can fit it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> and you just mail that stuff back to him, and he sends you a hat. Okay, okay. I might, I might be into that. Now, Next time you see me, I might have one. <laughs> <laughs> now that's something we're going to hold Charleston to, or maybe you can do a, 
do what we did, uh, Nate, is we'll trade you helmets. We'll trade a, a Charleston helmet for your hat, and you guys can swap for a day or for a show. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> you'd have a tough time playing in that thing. <laughs> oh no, it's just a pre. It's just a pregame warm up. The pregame <laughs> wear. <laughs> be snapping the fingers too, and uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> snapping the fingers. That might be my next sack dance. I'm gonna do that little two step <laughs> yeah. that y'all got going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, you'll know that that's your tribute, Nate, right there to the dead south is the Charleston Hughes sock dance will be the uh, uh, <laughs> Don't expect don't expect that whistle though that now that I've now that I've heard it, I get it. Yeah. yeah like... <laughs> <laughs> are a lot that's of the other boys, a lot of the other boys rider fans, you guys grew up as rider fans here in Saskatchewan? Oh, yeah, I mean, you all kind of grew up as rider fans to a degree. Whether you're watching or not, you're hearing about it, you're at someone's place and you're watching the game, you know? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So how many people are actually in the band? Because I've seen four, I've seen five. I've seen a girl swap in. She came out of nowhere. She was surprising. And I'm trying to figure out what's going, what's, what's going on with that. Yeah, so there are four members. We're back to the original four. Uh, but what happened was, in the beginning, Danny was still very heavy in um, his structural engineer degree. And you know, he started taking his master's program and had to get work done. So he wasn't able to make a lot of tours. So then our good friend Del Suelo came in and learned the cello and played a bit. And even before him, Graham Tilsley played a little bit, stepped in when he needed to. Before that, another guy. We, got, we asked all these guys to learn the cello that don't know how to play it. They're <laughs> good musicians, so they just, you know, they just figure it out. And then they, they would step in and save our bucks and we needed it. And then Colton took a little leave from the band for about three years. And in that time, Eliza, Mary Doyle came in and joined in for a bit. And uh, yeah, now we're all back together. So we got the, the original four back. All right, that's pretty cool. How many instruments can you play? Well, I can kind of play the guitar. That's <laughs> kind of? <laughs> He's he like I'm just I'm just the voice. <laughs> and the looks and the looks. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably the worst guitar player in the band, and second worst singer probably. You know, but uh, I make it work. I just go with that I believe. You know, yeah. <laughs> I can play a uh, guitar and a little bit of mandolin, and I can fiddle around on some other stuff. But I'm not great in anything else, really. Yeah. So when so when y'all started this so when y'all started this whole band off and everything because you know it all starts off some kind of way, did it start off as just hey let's just try this out or hey you start off as a joke or hey do we go like man we're we're really pretty good at what point did you that like determine like we can make this happen? Well, when we first started, it was the day after I met Colton. Um, I was washing dishes up in in um, my condo that we were renting by the university. I was listening to a band called Trampled by Turtles. And he came, uh, came over with my roommates. They're on the wrestling team together. And we just started talking about music right away. <clears throat> and he said how he just recently got a banjo. And I said, I always wanted to play in a band. So that's how it started. It kind of started as like just some friends jamming and having, you know, having some fun together, not taking ourselves seriously. But then we started taking it, like realizing it's something we wanted to do. We played about five or six shows in and around Regina, and then we got invited to go play Red Deer, Alberta. Then we got one taste of the road, and we <laughs> we we couldn't get enough. We were just like, okay, oh, really? we got to keep going, yeah. We got to keep going. It was too fun. We had a blast. Shortly after that, we booked a month-long tour in Saskatchewan, Alberta. Just since, you know, maybe no one was even watching some nights. But we just like, yeah, let's keep doing this. This is awesome. Yeah. That's so pretty good. What's what's the what's kind of been your like TSN highlight um, you know moment where you can think back now where you're going like man okay I came from you know just thinking about playing it with for, with a few guys to now man yeah we played at this venue in the states or we played at this venue here and doing that what's your kind of you're going like yeah man okay this is pretty good but I'm sure you got another goal that you want to get to but what's been kind of the the TSN highlights so far, and, and where do you want to go after that? Well, there's, there's been a, a couple. The first highlight is when people start singing your songs back to you. That was the first <laughs> highlight. They're like, oh, okay, people 
people are actually liking our stuff and you know they know the words that's incredible yeah and after that it was uh i'd say our most recent one that blew our minds we played red rocks in colorado there that's the ten thousand person amphitheater and uh, we played with deer tick and trampled by turtles and that was just incredible it's been i play there every day for the rest of my life if i could um and then other than that, we got we're supposed to play the caverns in Tennessee coming up, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, but in, in a cave like that's just a cool <laughs> setting. We're really looking forward to that. And, and uh, before uh, before uh, Red Rocks, I'd say it was when we got the opportunity to start exploring playing Europe. I didn't right. care where it was; just you got the opportunity to get on a plane and go play somewhere. How else. how is how was that in Europe? How was that vibe in Europe? I mean, when they're when you're coming over to, to play kind of that your style of music, is there a big following there? I, I mean, that's they bought into us first. Yeah, you know, we, stayed, we were a band for about a year and a half, and we were doing pretty well in Saskatchewan, Alberta. It was starting to build a little bit more and more, and you know, the name started to get tossed around. Then we started going to Germany, and Germany just they took us, and we ran with them for a couple of years. All right, we were going there three, four times a year doing mm. some pretty bigger shows than we played anywhere else. Yeah. Maybe we got to see Charleston on, if it's off season, maybe we got to see if they need a, a few lackeys for their road trips and be able to come along. And I, I do have suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't, we have some for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. And then what's uh, anything, any, any place else that you guys like, I know the Junos would have been cool to be able to play for and be able to do that but any any other motivation or place you guys are going okay we want to play here i want to play with this band or any other kind of a place that you're you're kind of motivated to go to oh yeah i like to play the grand old opry in nashville yeah. that'd be you know just a bucket list kind of thing yeah oh, i'm sure there's a couple more on top of my mind that i'm just blanking on but yeah it would have been amazing to play the Junos. i mean everybody that's a great pinnacle in life to win one we've won one before yeah, and then we're gonna have the opportunity to play it this year, and it was like, oh man, that's that's yeah. what he is. Yeah, you know, well, the, the Grand Ole Opry. I was there a few years ago, and uh, yeah, it's just when you go into places like that, it's the history, right? It's the vibe you get, the people, the appreciation of music when you're there in in Nashville. That it's just like it it takes you away. Mm. Right, and you're part of that history at that point too. Yeah. Once you get a chance to play there, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Nate. We definitely uh, appreciate coming on the show and, and join us. We got to see if we can work on that uh, Charleston sack dance. We got to maybe see if we can get together and. Uh... Uh, I got to see if I could throw it in there. But if I do, <laughs> if I do that, that means you got to throw a surf in there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, I can throw a surf. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can figure out the royalties after about. Who... <laughs> oh, oh, side question: Is your middle? Does your middle name start with a J? Nope. Oh man! Yeah. There goes <laughs> there goes his PI investigating skills. <laughs> yeah. I I thought I found him on MySpace from way back in the day. Oh, did I? I think I did. <laughs> there, is there, but I, there is something on there from back in the day for sure. Oh, oh see, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I told you this man is good at his private investigative skills. So watch yeah. out. I saw some MySpace pictures, and I was on the fence about whether it was you or not, but okay. That's hilarious. Well, it would be even better if it wasn't me and you put it up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, Nate, uh, thanks again. We really appreciate coming on the show. Uh, we wish you all the best, and uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to be able to see you out in the show and on the road uh, at a show soon, and all the best to you. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having me on here. Have yeah, man. Thanks. Appreciate appreciate coming on, chatting with me. I know I can ask some silly questions sometimes, <laughs> but they're all I, I I need to know, and everybody else needs to know too. You know, the <laughs> better. So, yeah. so in hell, I'll be good company. Also, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's the sign off line. There you go. <laughs> all right. Take care, man. See you guys. <laughs>